Hi, I'm Tommy Thomas. I want to welcome you back to the show, How to Beat the Odds. If you've watched the show before, you know that just about every show, I start out by talking about that old devil and the demons. You say, why does Tommy always do that? Because you have to understand, we all do, how real they are and how they really cause us a lot of problems in our life. And a lot of times we don't recognize that's where the problem's coming from. I had a guest, Don Dickerman, on the show a couple of months ago. We had more phone calls and emails in response to that show than any other. He's in a deliverance ministry. He ministered in prisons for 25, 30 years, and now all of a sudden God's called him into deliverance ministry for the last few years, and it's powerful, and he's seeing awesome healings and miracles when people get delivered and set free from the demonic realm. That's how powerful they can get a hold on us when we keep the door open and we don't know how to get free from them. And people would call up and say, how do I get these books? I want to get free. Well, he's my guest again today. And we're going to talk about David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, who was involved in the murders. He's in, in prison for life right now. But Don's known him for a lot of years now. He's truly born again. But we're going to talk about his life a little bit and how the powers of darkness influenced him to do what he did to actually kill people. So right now, let's meet Don Dickerman again, and we'll talk about David Berkowitz. Don, hey, Tom. welcome to the show. Thank you. Bless you. Good to have you here again, brother. Thank you. I know you stay real busy. People come from everywhere, don't they? Yeah, they do. Well, you know, my wife and I came for deliverance. Yes, yes. Everybody can use deliverance. A absolutely. Because a lot of stuff is generational, and if you don't know, you don't know, do you? No. Most people don't know. And that that's the... That's probably the thing that I see most often is people who uh, are, are victims, and that's really the word, of demonic oppression is from um, generational curse, ancestral curse, and uh, the permission of their fathers, their forefathers, and uh, that's from Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, from Exodus, uh, right in the heart of the Ten Commandments, where... Uh, Jesus uh, is teaching, uh, or actually God is, is teaching, that uh, for the sins of the third and fourth generation, he will visit iniquity on the children. And uh, so we see that. We see that consistently when that permission, that legal right is canceled. Uh, we see people free. Uh, and it's not enough just to cancel the right. Uh, the second step in that is to uh, cast the demon out. So uh, we see that on a, on a regular basis. And for the last uh, 10 years in our ministry, uh, I guess I've ministered probably to somewhere in the neighborhood of 25,000 people uh, and um, never changes. The principles are always the same. Uh, the scripture is always true. And, and I always approach it as a, uh, not a power encounter, but a truth encounter. And, uh, the, the power of the demon is the lie. And when we resist the lie with the truth, uh, then, th then they're actually powerless. But uh, what Jesus said to do was cast them out. And uh, where we've, I think, fallen short in the church is we counsel them out, try to uh, medicate them out. Uh, but uh, what Jesus said to do was cast them out. Well, I know you've been in prison ministry for a number of years. Yeah. And many years ago, you met the son of Sam, David Berkowitz, right. in prison. And you ministered to him. And we have some roll-ins we're going to do as we talk about him to hear his responses. But you talked to him about his upbringing and all. And it was a little different than most, most young people. But yeah. he had a loving family, didn't he? Well, David, David was born out of wedlock. Uh, he, he's, uh, David is Jewish. His birth mother and father were Jewish, but uh, he was born out of an affair. Uh, so he was given up for adoption uh, and was adopted by a Jewish couple, the Berkowitz family. And uh, David was raised in a loving home. They loved him, and his words are they did the best they could. Let's do a roll in and hear what he has to say about it. All right. All right. My parents gave me so much love. I was an only child growing up in the Bronx. They were just simple working class people. You know, my dad made enough to just get by and they gave me everything that a child could want and a lot of love and uh, I just never had any peace. I was tormented all the time and uh, walked, lived in loneliness a lot, locked myself away in a room in a closet for hours on end in the darkness and you know the whole story and I don't know why. He had loving parents. 
Yeah, uh, David's parents loved him and did the best they could, but he, w he was a troubled uh, child from birth. He, he told me uh, stories about uh, preferring darkness to light and how he would, uh, as a child, get under the bed uh, and hide just because he preferred darkness, get in the closet and hide. And uh, he said, I would turn things over, go into tantrums. He said, I was out of control. Uh, he also told me it was a miracle he made it through high school uh, because he was in trouble all the time. And um, his, he was tormented. He, David was uh, without doubt uh, a demon-possessed individual. Now what we deal with is demonic oppression in believers, but David was not a, not a believer. He was actually controlled by demons. And after high school, um, a lot of his friends had, had moved off. He, he went to, uh, he joined the army and was in the army for a while, was honorably discharged, came back to New York City. Most of his friends that he had known had grown up and moved away. So uh, he was pretty much alone. And uh, he met some guys at a party that were involved in a cult. And uh, because of David's situation, uh, his story is, he said, I was just attracted to things like that. And they introduced him uh, to a satanic Bible. And he said, Don, I, I can't really tell you, but there was like an energy to that book that attracted me to it. Well, we got a roll in of him talking about that. Yeah. Let's roll that in, okay. then we'll come back and talk some more about All right. it. At first, my first contact was with the satanic Bible. And uh, I had met some people that were into witchcraft and so forth. I didn't really understand at the time what exactly it was that they were into. But one of the guys there, when I first started to meet with these people and, and join this uh, little group, they says, you know, you got to get yourself a copy of this Bible. Mm -hmm. And I says, a, a, a satanic Bible? I says, what is that? I never even heard of such a thing. I never even knew there was such a thing. He says, oh, yeah, you can get this at any bookstore. And so I went and got a copy, wanted to fit into the group. You know, when I, I picked it up, the most strangest thing had happened. And I'm absolutely convinced hmm. that, that this, this was real. This was something that was going on, as, as spooky as it sounded. But this little book uh, seemed to have an energy source within it, as if you were picking up like a, a, a little transformer or something, a low voltage transformer. You could feel like there was like a humming or something and it seemed to radiate mm. a certain type of power. Well, Don, do you believe that that Bible has energy? I mean, those powers of darkness are powerful sometimes, aren't they? Well, yeah, I, 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 there's no doubt that uh, there's an, an attraction to evil and especially when the demons are on the inside and the demons working on the outside uh, by whatever means they're using, there is an attraction. And uh, David didn't know what the attraction was. Uh, he just knew he didn't have peace. And uh, this, this gave him some friends, uh, uh, even though they weren't really his friends, but he became part of this satanic group through rituals, through uh, actually bloodletting. They, they killed animals, uh, sacrifices. And Son of Sam was the name of the cult. Uh, they worshiped a demon named Sam Hain. And that's how David got the name Son of Sam. Uh, but David uh, is not the Son of Sam. He was one of 24 sons of Sam. Uh, he didn't, he sh there were 13 people shot in this uh, year and a half to almost two year rampage. Uh, David was guilty of three of those. But his testimony today would be, um, I killed three people, I deserve to be where I am. Uh, doesn't feel like he deserves parole. Uh, although um, he would be somebody uh, that would not be a problem to society again. Uh, he, he'll not make parole and he's not seeking it. Uh, but he's genuinely born again. Well, he talks about that experience. Let's roll that in so people can know right. that he's born again. Then we'll come back and talk some more how people can get free. Great. All right. Let's roll it in. Well, one day I was uh, walking the prison yard. It was in the wintertime. It was very cold. I was just walking by myself, and another inmate came up to me and uh, introduced himself. And, uh, you know, he, want, he told me, he says, listen, Dave, I want to tell you something, that 
Jesus Christ loves you very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I looked at him, I says, oh really, uh, he does, huh? He says, yeah, Jesus Christ loves you and he sent me here to tell you this. Mm -hmm. And I, I laughed, I says, well, <laughs> it, it's nice of Jesus Christ to love me, but I mean, I, why would he love me? Uh, I don't even love myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wasn't a believer in God, I wasn't looking for God or anything like that. And yet, there was something about this guy, he just seemed so friendly and open. We struck up a, a little bit of a friendship, and that night a little bit of a conversation, and we walked the yard together, and he shared a lot of his life. In the next couple of months, uh, we'd meet, you know, several times a week in the prison yard, mm -hmm. and talk about things, talk about life and our circumstances, and he, he would always share a little bit at a time about Jesus Christ, and what Jesus Christ meant to him. And he was a criminal just like myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, uh, you really believe in this Jesus? You really think he could forgive you? And uh, you say, he, you keep on insisting he could forgive someone like me. Are you sure? He says, oh yeah, I'm definitely sure. Mm -hmm. I said, do you know my past? Do you know my situation? Do you know the things that I did? And, and so forth. He says, yeah, I know. But he says, I don't care what kind of hold the devil had on you in mm -hmm. the past. Jesus Christ can set you free and he can forgive you. And, and make you a new person and fill mm -hmm. you with peace and love and joy and this all sounded real good but uh, I didn't really think you know that it, I, it would apply to me or that I could one day ever become a Christian. Did was that want impossible? It? Did you want to believe it? In a way I did but in a way I just couldn't mm -hmm. you know but he gave me a little pocket Bible and he says listen I'm giving you a little Gideon's Bible and uh, I'd like you to read that he says you know being that you're Jewish, you want to read the Psalms because the, the Psalms were written by King David and mm -hmm. so forth and, and I think you'd get a lot out of it. So I says, okay, I took the Bible, you know, and I says, well, I like to read so I'll go through it and see, you yeah. know. And maybe a couple of days later, I did one day when I was in my cell at night, get the urge to open it up and, uh, and I just began to read here and there, browsing around and I saw where it had the Psalms it was one of those little Bibles that had mm -hmm. the New Testament with the Psalms in and the Proverbs back. in the back. And so I was reading through the Psalms and I, and I says, you know, I said to myself, this stuff is really beautiful. I mean, the way things were worded and there was uh, portions of the Psalm where the writer was crying out for, mm -hmm. to God when he was overwhelmed with loneliness, uh, when he had problems, when there was heaviness on his heart. And it just seemed to be... I don't know, something supernatural was happening. Mm, yeah. It was just like so relevant to my needs. It was like if I could write something, mm -hmm. it would be like the same thing. You yeah. know, you know, oh God, hear my cry. Uh, you know, lead me to the rock that is higher than I mm -hmm. when my heart is overwhelmed within me and, mm -hmm. and so forth. I says, yeah, this is me, you know? Yeah. I mean, and uh, I just began to read more and more. I just developed a little bit without realizing what was happening, mm -hmm. I was developing a little thirst for the Bible. Mm -hmm. And one night, I was reading uh, from the scriptures and the Psalms. I don't even remember what Psalm it was. I think it was Psalm 145, which is my favorite now. And uh, I read that and I says, man, this stuff is really beautiful. Hmm. And there were times when I would start, tears would flow in my eyes yeah. a little bit when I'd read the Psalms, yeah. but this night, I just dawn, I just completely broke down. There was just something in me. Amen. I just started to sob when I was sitting on top of my bed. I just started, it was just started to be, you know, my eyes filled with tears and I was hurting real bad and I, I didn't want anyone to see me and I shut off my light in my cell mm -hmm. and I just stood there in the darkness and I just, something compelled me to just get down on my knees mm. and talk to God or try to talk to God. Yeah. I didn't know how to really talk to God. I right. just says, you know, Jesus, if you're there, if you're, if you're somewhere, I, I, I need you so bad. Mm. I'm hurting. My life is a mess. I, I ruined my life. I ruined the lives of other people. I, I destroyed innocent lives. I don't even know how I got into this mess. I, I failed my family. I failed society. I did everything wrong. Mm. I never did nothing right. You know, if you're willing to forgive me or whatever, you know, please forgive me. I'm sick and tired of this life. I don't even want to live anymore. Hmm. I don't even care anymore. Nothing makes sense anymore. And I just stood like, stood like that for maybe 20 minutes. Hmm. And I cried like a baby, silently, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, when I got up off my knees, 
there's no way to describe it except to say that a heavy weight, it was like a heavy weight, mm -hmm. was lifted. As if you were carrying like a heavy sack of potatoes around for hours and then suddenly someone, someone told you, okay, go ahead and put it down. And you know how you feel that yeah. suddenly there's a lightness. Mm -hmm. And that's just really the way I felt. I felt something had changed, but I didn't know anything really what it was. I didn't yeah. know what being born again was. I didn't know what salvation right. really was. Although my friend Rick was always trying to tell me a little bit here and there. Well, the next day, I saw Rick in the yard. We met again, and I says, hey, Rick, guess what I did? And he said, well, what'd you do? And I says, last night, I prayed to Jesus Christ. He said, you, you, you what? I said, <laughs> I, I prayed to Jesus. And he was so full of joy, yeah. he was jumping up and down and shouting, hallelujah, thank yeah. you, Jesus. I'm looking at this guy, so what's going on? Yeah. He says, do you realize what you just did? I says, uh... I just told you, I just talked to Jesus. And he says, man, that's it, that's what you do. You're born again now, yeah. you're a child of God. He said, did you, did you tell Jesus you were sorry for your sins? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and did you ask Jesus to forgive you? I said, yeah. And did you believe he forgave you? I says, I don't know, is he supposed to? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, that's why he came, to die on the cross, to forgive you of your sins. You put your faith in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then he explained everything. Yeah. And then I understood that right then and there, I was really born again. My life was transformed Amen. by the power of God. And, and the Holy Spirit, from that day on, I believe that, that God knew how much I was hurting in my sure, heart. Sure he knew did. how much pain I went through in my life. And even though mm -hmm. I'm in prison now, and I deserve to be in prison now, and I deserve to be in prison for the rest of my life, that day, about nine years ago, when I got on my knees in that prison cell, mm. God, God, God flooded my heart with a joy and peace that, that only, that I believe I'm the only one that ever experienced anything <laughs> like that. I mean, I know others have, but yeah. it seems like it was just, just it was something Special. God gave just for me. It was yeah. like my, my breaking out of this captivity, maybe like somebody that was in a dungeon for years and years, suddenly he set free. You know, I felt like suddenly this new light went off in my head and I said, my God, you know, mm -hmm. I feel I feel different now and he encouraged me to go to the chapel and I started to go to the chapel with the guys up there I saw that there were other prisoners just like me mm -hmm. you know their lives were failures I mean they were alcoholics some of them some of them were criminals all their lives others you know they messed up somewhere along the line and found themselves behind these prison walls and just like me you know they reached the point where they just couldn't go on anymore you know, God was dealing with their hearts, yes. and they gave their life to Jesus. Well, he got born again for real, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Uh, you know, I, I've, uh, I've ministered in over 850 different prisons around the world, and, and I don't know how many inmates I may have encountered, but it's, it's thousands and thousands. And uh, so a lot of times you're able to recognize uh, when something's genuine. And David is genuinely born again. He's a, he's a new creation in Christ. And David calls me his pastor. I see him on a fairly regular basis. He calls our home. And uh, he's not proud of, of any of his past. He's so ashamed. And, but he's, he's happy that, uh, that there can be this part of his testimony, that there's hope for people, and that he's evidence of, uh, of the genuine life-changing power of the gospel and how real the Lord Jesus is. And so he's happy, he's happy that we're talking about this today and that people are, are, are gonna be listening to it. But um, he's, a, he's a testimony of God's grace. Uh, that's all you can say, uh, just God's grace and mercy. And uh, he was um, probably, the, probably the number one person I've ever met that uh, I would say that guy was demon possessed, but he's, he's not today. Jesus uh, possesses him, he's owned, purchased, bought with a price, Amen. redeemed. Amen. And uh, I know he has a concern for other young people because when you're a young person and you don't fit in or if you're lonely or you're looking for excitement, that's just open territory for the devil. Yeah, absolutely. You don't know how many inmates I've talked to that tell me the same story, so I can relate to that. I never. I never fit anywhere. I always felt like I was different than everybody else. And there was, there's always been something driving me and pushing me. And, um, 
And that's not, you know, some, some people would want that to be a cop out and say, well, he's saying the devil made me do it. He's never said that. Uh, he's saying Jesus delivered me from it, but he never said the devil made him do it. Uh, he made his choices and he made some, some bad choices. Uh, he, chose, um, he chose what was attractive uh, to, his, to his flesh. And he told me uh, on, on several occasions, he said there was something about that satanic Bible that when I read it and I became, began to do some of the things that we did as a, as a cult, uh, he said, I, I became a psychic. He said, I could see things before they happened. And uh, he said, as weird as that sounds now, he said, um, it got a grip on me. I liked, that, uh, I liked that feeling, but he said it didn't last long and there was always the emptiness and the, uh, which is true with, with everybody that goes that direction. It, it, that's not just with demons, it's, it's with sin. The, the end result, there's a, there's a point when sin's not fun anymore. The consequences start to weigh in. And so, um, David got so deep, he was, uh, he was psychotic. Uh, he, was, uh, he would have been diagnosed, I'm sure, as paranoid, schizophrenic, bipolar, and, and probably was. I don't know all of his diagnoses, but, uh, but he's free today. That's not what he is today, you know. You know, you're watching the show. This is real. David Berkowitz is not making excuses for his behavior. He's not saying, I did this because of that. He made wrong choices, but he was totally possessed. And when you're possessed by the powers of darkness, you're not your own. They will take control of your life. And if you don't know how to get free, and he said he didn't know how to get free. He said he wanted to commit suicide several times to get free from mm -hmm. this. He said it's such a deception because what the devil does when you get caught up in a group of these people who are living for the powers of darkness, Satan presents all the things that are attractive to young people, sex, drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. all that excitement, the things that someone who's lonely or doesn't have any friends, all of a sudden they bond with these people, they get caught up in it, and then he'll be the first to tell you, they don't care if you live or die. Yeah. And they really don't, do they, Don? No. No. It's powerful when that gets a hold of people. Yeah, and that's actually what happened uh, after, the, after David was arrested, uh, he was ready to be arrested. Uh, he pled guilty to all of the crimes, even though he didn't commit all of them. Um, he refused to go to trial. He was, he was um, before judges in the Queens, the Bronx, um, well, the five bor boroughs where, where the crimes took place. And um, he said, I don't, I don't want to go to trial. I, I'm guilty. I did it. Just sentence me and get it over with. And so they sentenced him to over 360 consecutive years in New York prisons. If they had had a death penalty at that time, uh, he, would, he would be dead today. Uh, and he's already served uh, 26 or 27 years. Uh, and he'll, he'll never get out. He finished his 125 uh, year sentence and they start the next one and he's got 13 consecutive sentences. So. Uh, he's not gonna. He's not gonna get out of prison, but he's out of he's out of the prison he was in. And uh, David uh, David loves the Lord, and this uh, you know he wouldn't want us to be talking about him. He'd want us to be talking about his Jesus. Amen to yeah. that. Listen, it's so important. You wrote Serpents in the Sanctuary, and this book has his testimony in it, right? Yes. Uh -huh. All right. Now you also have Turmoil in the Temple. All right. Now it's got some other testimonies. Some it? other testimonies. <laughs> Praise God for that. And we have right here, Protected by Angels. There are real angels that protect Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And many people wanted this book, Keys to Liberated Living. Now we're going to put your email up and your ministry address, your website up, yeah. so people can contact you. And you travel around and minister from time to time too. Right. Yeah, we're, we're uh, available to minister. And, and glad to do it. Would you pray for folks watching? Let's just Absolutely. pray that they'll get set free and get a hold of the truth. Absolutely. All right. Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name that you're God all the time, you're God right now, and you're God all by yourself. And we're so grateful that we know when we call on your name that uh, we, we don't have to look for you because you're everywhere present at all times. And, and we have that invitation to come into your presence. 
So Father, in the name of your Son, who gave his life to redeem us and deliver us and to set at liberty them that are bruised, I pray for those that are in the grips of, of evil uh, today and uh, can be free, that you'll just uh, minister to their heart with your Holy Spirit to reveal to them the avenues they need to take. And if they're not saved, we pray that uh, they just have an awareness that, that Jesus Christ is their hope for salvation. And uh, that they, uh, if I just ask people watching right now, if you'd pray with me, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Save my soul. I choose to be free. I choose Jesus as my Savior. I believe you're the risen, resurrected Son of God, and I receive you into my life. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Don, thanks for being on the show again, brother. Yes, sir. I want to encourage you. Get a hold of his materials. You will know somebody that needs these materials. You might need them yourself. If you do, contact him. I'm telling you, we all need deliverance. We can be deceived so easily. And I want to encourage you. I know Don Dickerman, my wife and I know his family. We know the people that work with him in the deliverance ministry. Their hearts are right and they're doing an awesome work. I want to encourage you. Support his ministry financially and prayerfully. And we want to thank you again for watching our show. You can contact my wife, Latrice, and I at howtobeattheodds.com, our website, or my email, Tommy at howtobeattheodds.com. There's a number at the end of the show. You can call while the show's on, and my wife, Latrice, will pray for you. God bless you, and we'll see you next time on How to Beat the Odds. I need to hear somebody testify. I need to hear somebody say yeah. that you were lost and at the bottom, and you could not find your way. Just when life had lost all meaning, and you wish that you could die, Jesus came to you that day. You invited him to stay I need to hear somebody testify Were you born to some good? 